Hello and welcome to my basement recording studio here on Long Island, New York. I want to thank my friends at Fender Musical Instruments and also at Pig Hog Cables and Reunion Blues. I've got a lot of cool stuff in here from all of those fine folks and I'm looking forward to showing you around. So the first thing you see when you come down the steps is this handwritten lyric wall. All, all these lyrics, most of them were put up by my son and his bandmates. Uh, I did this tribute to ACDC. It came out pretty cool. So here is the nerve center of the studio. I'm very lucky to have this cool desk. This I had custom made for my studio in Arizona, Uranus Recording of Tempe. And eventually we sort of outgrew it, but I hung on to it. And it's a beautiful custom metal antique desk, and it just it works so perfectly for for this setup. The whole studio is mostly built around this awesome piece of gear. This is the AMR MCR4 four track cassette recorder. And it's accompanying mixing board, the AMR64. And I believe AMR was a subsidiary of PV and they were trying to make some high end gear this is from 1986. I bought this, I had it fully restored. Recently I bought another one, so I have it for parts. It's beautifully wired up with awesome cables from Pig Hog Cables. I've got an Elise's Nanoverb here, going into the aux channel. So you can see I have a kidney pod, and an Alesis SR16. So this is basically how I've been recording since the 80s. I wanted the studio to be old school. You know, I wanted my son to learn how to record in the traditional way. I didn't want it all happening in the computer. So I spent a few months on eBay looking around for a four track and I discovered this thing. The board is really awesome. It's built like a Russian tank. It's got six channels. Each channel can be assigned either uh, to the mix or it can also be assigned to tape. So the way I have this rigged up now is with uh, two guitars, the drum machine and a vocal. And all of this gets wired directly into the UA Aero, which is a pretty cool little device. And then I've got a little headphone amp here. All of these cables are from Pig Hog. They have really cool stuff, something f for all of my needs. One of the things I really like about the Aero is that it is bus powered, so there's a minimal amount of cabling that is required. I've found through experience you need pencils and pens around. I've got these cool little valet trays for guitar picks and smaller cables, tuners, etc. Here's my webcam, which I have attached to a microphone stand so I can move it around the room and adjust its height. And everything here is really well set up and very minimal. I've got a set up for all the tools, strings, all the basic junk that you need for the studio. Got an old Nintendo GameCube bag to hold the microphones. It's good to have a little magazine rack here. You always need pads of paper in the studio and it's my tradition to keep some graphic novels around. So I have a couple of my favorites. Have a basic PA set up here. Nothing too fancy. It's a Gansben's powered mixer. It does the job really well for this studio. And it runs into four JBL floor monitors. All the microphones are Shure SM58s. This is a great little PA setup for, uh, for band rehearsals. Show you some of the guitar amps that we have here in the studio. I've got a pair of these Fender 
Mustang GT100s. This is a solid little modeling amp. It does a great job for this space. And I've got a pair of those for the studio. Got a couple of different bass amps. Uh, this little Fender guy, the Rumble 100. It's pretty cool. And then this 400 Pro. And I've got all the amps I really need. Of course, I would love to have a few more. And I do have some in storage in Arizona. But for now, this will do. Now I am proud to show off some of my awesome guitars. These two beauties are from the Fender Custom Shop. I had them made back in the 90s. First I got the Tele and then a few years later I had them make a matching Stratocaster. So they have nearly identical hardware, nearly identical paint, but the finish on these things is just incredible. It's just, these are beautiful guitars. And the Tele, this is one of the best Tellys that Fender has ever made. The thing is just a beast. This is my Rickenbacker 330. I bought this new in 1993. And I swapped out the original pickups for the classic style toasters. But this is a great Rickenbacker. It took me years to break it in, get it to stay in tune, but now it's just beautiful. This is a 76 Explorer reissue. I bought it new in 94 and I swapped the pickups for the PAFs. It's the only one of my guitars that I can usually get Scotty and Jesse to want to play. We have a beautiful Les Paul from the Gibson Custom Shops. It's 2004 and it is an awesome, awesome guitar. This is my main guitar, given to me by Fender Musical Instruments. I think I got this back in 2006, and it's been my main guitar ever since. If you've ever seen Jim Blossoms in concert, you've seen me play this guitar. It's a really solid piece. I have this great old Gibson LG-1 acoustic from 1964. I found it uh, back in like 88, I think I bought this thing. It has a really sweet voice, very unique. It doesn't sound like any other guitar I've ever played. Uh, my son has this nice tailor that his mom bought for him. It's a really good tailor. Nice guitar. I kind of dig it, but I'm a Fender man. Here's another Fender acoustic that I have. Nothing fancy, but it's good to have a spare. And I also have this Fender acoustic bass. It's pretty handy to have a, an acoustic bass around the studio. Lastly, we have a really solid Fender Precision bass. Sounds great. Plays great. I have a lot of these Reunion Blues guitar hooks. They grip the guitar and they sort of clamp down on the headstock. And I also have some guitar hooks here on the wall that I use to hold the cables. It's important to have the cables up on the wall at hand, easy to get to. Now I'll show you some of the personal items I have around the studio. You can see some of my lunchbox collection. I, at one point, had a total of about 140 lunchboxes, but somebody broke into my storage room in Arizona and stole most of them. Here's some more of the lunchboxes. So here's some of my skateboard collection. A classic JFA board, another Staub with a vintage mint set of Gullwing Phoenix trucks. This Jim Blossom skateboard was a promotional item for congratulations, I'm sorry. Oh, and here's this really cool creature deck with limited edition tracker trucks. This was my grandmother's accordion. And she used to break this out and play it every once in a while. Here's a photograph of the Jim Blossoms on Saturday Night Live with host Phil Hartman. How awesome is that? I like to collect and restore mid-century furniture. My favorite are the Herman Miller shell chairs. I have a bunch of these upstairs too. One of my other hobbies is collecting and restoring 
what are known as eyeball lamps. This one is from the 60s or 70s, I don't know, but it's a particular design that has this bracket on the side of it. And over the years, I've been able to put together a collection of six of these in different colors. I've got four of these here in the studio. This one looks so cool. I just love this. So I've got a pair of these blue ones. I've got them in red, chrome, and upstairs I've got yellow and white. And then I also have some eyeball lamps down here on the floor. And this little disco lamp from Spencer's Gifts or the Halloween store or whatever. So that's pretty much it. That's the studio. Thanks for dropping by, folks. It's been a pleasure to show you around. I'll see you at my next live stream. Peace and love. Rock away.